Hello everyone, welcome to TSAM Digital. My name is Anna and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Farrell. He's the Head of US and Global Strategy at Finborn Technology. Welcome, Chris. Hi. So today we want us to speak about securing a safe SaaS native path to change with the modern financial data stack. So given that uh, data has really impacted firms' ability to respond to market and client demands for some years now, what do you believe is the critical operational issue impeding the industry? Well, you know, we live in a world of, of big data and, you know, that's nothing new to, for capital markets. I think what the challenge is, is that, you know, the pace of change and, and, and um, the types of changes that are happening in capital markets is, is unprecedented. You know, we have uh, ESG data, we have direct indexing, we have different types of asset classes that people are attempting to trade, different geographies, private markets. And that represents a real challenge to the industry. You know, how do we uh, look at the data, consume the data, make sense of it, um, and, and make sure that we are, you know, running the business consistent with kind of the risk profiles that we're meant to be running our businesses with. You know, in the, in the past kind of five or six years, there's been a lot of focus on you know, front-to-back programs, data warehousing, um, trying to get the data into kind of one place and consolidation. Um, but there's been you know, less work focused on the translation, the interpretation, getting the value out of that data. Um, it's great that it's now living in some institutions in one area, but, you know, transforming that um, and using that across the organization and with their market participants is the real challenge. Um, I think what's important for us to also understand is, is that, um, you know, this is, this is not a kind of a, a nice to have. This is a need to have for industries. Um, the, the industry players that are out there. Um, when we take a look at, you know, where markets are moving, we take a look at some of the themes that are impacting capital markets, whether it be fee compression, whether it be, you know, regulatory or regulatory uh, changes across the board, uh, or the fact that, you know, clients um, want to get access to their own data. Um, this represents a, a real challenge to the industry and something that, you know, market participants really need to, to focus on um, in, in the coming years. And what has stood in the way of solving this piece of the data puzzle to date? You know, capital markets are, are primarily built for a, in investor protection. Um, and that's why there's so many different participants from, from the clearing houses to the custodians and transfer agents. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, market participants, when they buy a bit of, uh, you know, of, of, of stock, that it settles um, and, and that bad actors don't happen very often. The trade-off through all this over the last you know, you know, 10 to 20 years has been efficiency, you know, productivity has taken a hit. And the solution to all this has been kind of a, you know, a monolithic enterprise data model to rule them all, um, seeking this kind of golden source of data um, that's built on, you know, quite fragile foundations, though, because within that, there is, you know, an insinuation that you can trade in a vacuum and you can't. Um, you always need to be able to interoperate with with capital market participants across the front to back stack, across the different asset classes you choose to participate in, and the geographies in which you play. Um, and so if you don't really solve for that data fidelity question on how you interoperate with multiple participants within your organization and, and, and beyond, you're never really going to get to that, you know, that ground truth. Uh, so when you look at your screens and your systems, you you know believe the numbers that are in front of you. Um, you know what we have with the, you know the modern financial data stack gets you there, and it gets you there in a real meaningful way because um, we don't look at the world with a siloed point of view. We don't look at the world in terms of um, you know, the function the, the functionality at the very end. You know we always heard you know, garbage in, garbage out. You need to solve for that data fidelity first. Uh, so that any functions and features you write over that are, are meaningful, are usable, um, and, and make sense. So, Chris, how is Finborn addressing data management differently? Well, you know, Finborn, you know, we, we don't come from outside the industry. We've been, we've been working in the industry our entirety of our careers. And, and what we want to recognize is that um, we're not starting with a blank sheet of paper. You know, clients um, and, and people that we help have large system estates. Um, there's been IT decisions and other decisions that have happened in the past, which means that, you know, what they really need is, is, is a way forward. And we help that in, in some fundamental ways. First is, you know, we don't add to the infrastructure complexity. Uh, we are able to connect to, you know, different systems and get that data fidelity from day one and iterate towards um, a deployment 
The second thing is, is that um, we don't mandate a, a data model. You know, you have data, a data model or multiple data models, which you want to use. You know, we can be um, opinionated, but quite often uh, we want to make sure that we are supporting your business the way that you want to run your business. Um, and that's really important for us. Um, and then the third point is, is that, uh, you know, we build data from, from bottom up, you know, at the atomic level, making sure that we have um, the right kinds of information in the right place, translated and available so that um, you can make sense of your, your system state. Um, and I think what this really kind of translates into is, you know, our ability to improve productivity and efficiency. And what we found with a lot of our clients is that um, that institutional knowledge drain, um, it gets stemmed uh, because people are doing the jobs that they want to do and they're doing it in a way that brings work-life balance back on the pitch. So that makes us, you know, you know fundamentally different to, to other participants uh, who play in our space. Thank you very much, Chris, for that. Um, and I know many firms are trying to balance uh, cost optimization while trying to achieve the digital data capabilities that will future-proof their businesses. Can you tell us about the types of use cases you're solving um, with this distinguished approach and the benefits it can create? You know, there's been a lot of consolidation in the industry, um, which means that, you know, a lot of folks have, you know, uh, multiple labors, multiple libors, or multiple sources of the truth. Um, being able to get your hands around that and understand how to operate, you know, because those decisions are, are made for for legitimate reasons. Why would I have, you know, a different source of the truth for, for a certain asset class versus another? Um, but, you, you know, running a business where you need to be able to, to, to have that aggregate view, have that consolidated view, and then make sense of it, translate it and get value from that data, run your business as a business unit um, is important. You know, on a similar vein or a similar thread to that is, you know, companies that, you know, have multi-asset solutions. Again, you know, being able to have, a, you know, a multi-asset solution in a single portfolio, being able to have that resiliency across your system state and being able to um, use, you know, the, our modern financial data stack to be able to run your business in a way that's consistent with the risk you want to take and strategies you want to deploy is really important. Well, Chris, thank you so much for um, being with us today. We really appreciated your time and our community as well. Uh, appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you again. All right. Thank you so much.